A while ago, you guys let me know that you were interested in seeing a video about the best gaming monitors. Our buddies at BenQ immediately answered the call, but we didn't want this video to be too one-sided, so Dell and Acer also decided to throw their hats in the ring. Let's see which one of these 4K gaming monitors is best to hook up all of your game consoles to. And yeah, you know what? Yeah, sure, a computer too, why not? A lot of people have their consoles plugged into their TVs. I like to have mine plugged into one of my computer monitors. I spend most of my time on the computer, I don't watch TV, and I stream. So I need my consoles to be with the rest of my junk. Maybe you play games on your PC, but also have some consoles. You can use these monitors for both. All of these monitors have at least one display port for your PC and at least one HDMI port for your consoles. If you got more than one, you might need an HDMI splitter, but that's nothing new for TVs either. In my opinion, games on a good gaming monitor look even better than games on a high-end TV. And if you're gonna be doing any sort of competitive gaming, then having that low response time of a computer monitor is gonna be a very valuable asset. Plus, you're a lot closer to the screen, you're in a chair, so you're upright, more attentive. You're not slouched around in a couch about to fall asleep. The whole thing's better. The whole thing's a lot better. If you're looking for a gaming monitor that fits all of this criteria, you're going to want a response time of, I don't know, less than five milliseconds. You're going to want something that's 4K because 4K monitors are relatively inexpensive now. And even if you don't have any 4K devices, you can future-proof your setup. We should be testing these monitors with the best hardware possible. So I bought myself an Xbox One X, not because I needed one or wanted one at all, but just because this video called for it. You're also going to want to keep an eye out for HDR or a high dynamic range when you're looking for a monitor. This is a mode that's supported by both the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro that just increases the ranges of colors and shades in an image. Where a normal monitor might crush the black levels together, an HDR monitor will show you the full range of detail in those blacks. All of these companies wanted to send me ultra-wide curved displays at first. This seems to be the new shtick, the new gimmick that they're trying to push like 3D TVs, remember those? I told them that most of you people watching are console gamers, so ultra wide wouldn't really work. If you plug the console into them, you get these big black bars on the side. It wouldn't fill the whole screen. Plus, most ultra wide monitors aren't even 4K. They're half of 4K. They're 1440p this way and 4K this way. So picture a normal 4K screen, but cut in half. That's why it's ultra wide. Like, like why even? But BenQ sent me an ultra wide anyway. How very nice of them. I'll get to that. But they also sent me the EL2870U 28 inch 4K gaming monitor with HDR. For transparency's sake, it's important to note that this video is not sponsored, but BenQ did send me two of their monitors to keep and Dell and Acer only loaned me their monitors. The BenQ comes with a high-speed HDMI cable, two HDMI inputs for two game consoles, one display port for your computer, and a headphone jack, which is important if you wanna mix game audio and computer audio into the same speaker system. And when you got your Discord chat going and your proximity chat in PUBG. It also has speakers. They're not great, they never are when they're built in, but I appreciate that they're there. Sometimes you don't have the luxury of external speakers and speakers are much better than no speakers at all. This monitor is great for what it is, a budget 4K gaming monitor with HDR. It is fast, but right out of the box, the picture looks very washed out compared to the other one. Luckily, it supports 10-bit color mode, so if you're going to be playing your Xbox One X, switch that color mode to 10-bit and the picture quality improves drastically. Not every game on the Xbox One X supports HDR. Forza does, and it looks good, but the difference is incredibly subtle. HDR adds a ton of value to a TV or monitor, but I personally don't think it's something that's very important. I don't think it should make or break your purchase. This BenQ monitor also doesn't have any vertical adjustment. It just tilts up and down. The best part about this gaming monitor is that it is under $500. BenQ is known for being a budget monitor company. 
This isn't to say that they make low quality stuff because they typically don't, but it's hard to find other monitors at the same price point with the same technology packed into it, or at least it was. Dell now owns Alienware and they have a bunch of great gaming monitors, including one that has a one millisecond response time and a 240 hertz refresh rate. But that monitor is only 1080p, so we had to throw it right out of this roundup. For this video, they sent me the Ultra Sharp 27 4K monitor, U2718Q. Woo! It has one HDMI port, one display port, one mini display port, a headphone jack for your HDMI audio output, and four USB ports. There are no speakers. It comes with a display port to mini display port cable for some reason, and a USB 3.0 cable. No HDMI cable, unless mine was missing something. Right out of the box, the picture is gorgeous. Not much changes when you switch to enabling 10-bit color. Maybe some deeper blacks, but that's about it. Nowhere on the spec sheet for this monitor does it say that it has HDR. In fact, Dell sells a monitor that's $1,000 more than this one that looks like the same exact monitor, just with HDR included. However, the Dell U2718Q, the one that I'm testing, has what they call Smart HDR. Enabling this makes PUBG look a little better, but otherwise the changes are very subtle. I reached out to Dell to clarify what exactly is going on here. Their response was very complicated, but essentially the super expensive HDR monitor is HDR10 certified. It is the truest HDR you can get. This monitor that we have in our hands only supports Dell HDR, which uses a hardware engine in the monitor to process HDR metadata and deliver, quote, true to life color contrast and detail. From Dell's website, for professionals who need HDR10 certified monitors for color critical design work, the Dell Ultra Sharp 27 4K HDR monitor is a one-stop solution that offers Dell Premier color features with wide color coverage color accuracy, and user calibration. For users looking for a monitor with HDR10 viewing capability and perfect for everyday tasks with a desktop monitor, we recommend our Dell HDR monitors. So this monitor is kind of HDR, but so is the BenQ. All BenQ says is that it, quote, supports HDR content. None of this matters, it doesn't matter. HDR barely makes a difference. You're already seeing your game in crystal clear 4K with a beautiful color range, just relax yourself. Plus, once you flip on that 10 bit, don't even worry about it. This Dell monitor has a fantastic color range, but I did notice a very warm tint whenever there were warm things on screen, almost like it was affecting the white balance of the entire image. This was a minor issue. This monitor listed at $740, which is way more than the BenQ, but now you can find them for under $500, which is the same price as the BenQ. It's not looking that good for BenQ. Finally, we have my favorite, my love, my guy, the Acer Predator XB1 27 inch, or XB27 1HK. I actually bought this monitor myself on January 1st of last year because I was looking for a good IPS monitor for the truest colors possible when doing design work. And I also needed a really fast monitor for gaming. IPS monitors typically have a really slow response time in order to process all of those colors. At the time, the Acer Predator was the only monitor to have an IPS panel and be able to play games that quickly. Because of this, it was expensive as hell. The price has since gone down, but when I asked what Acer had for me that was a good 4K gaming monitor that was 16 by nine, they sent me this, which thanks, but I, I have one already. Every game I play on here is immaculate. I've been playing my Nintendo Switch on here for a year. People complain about the RGB range being limited on their docked Switches, but not me. It always looks stunning. And of course, editing on this thing is always great. I can see all of the fine detail in the darker colors. I often have to move my project over to a crappier screen just to make sure normal people can see the same level of detail that I can. And this monitor isn't even HDR. 
It just has that good of a dynamic range just by the nature of being an IPS panel. But this monitor does have one little tiny little flaw that ended up being a really big, huge flaw. It has one HDMI port, one display port, four USB ports, speakers, a headphone jack, and it comes with an HDMI cable, a display port cable, and a USB 3.0 cable. But the HDMI port is an HDMI 1.4 port. That means it does not support 4K above 60 Hertz, meaning the Xbox One X refuses to even appease the Acer with a resolution over 1080p. This is abysmal. It's not like the monitor isn't capable of 4K 60. I can run that stuff all the time out of my PC, even out of my Mac partition and into the display port on the monitor. It's a beautiful monitor, but for some ungodly reason, the HDMI port on the back does not support high data speeds. So the Xbox One X is not utilized to its full potential. It's an absolute shame because when running games like Fortnite on all of these monitors at once at 1080p 60, the Acer Predator was the clear winner. Even without HDR, you can see so many more colors. But without the ability to display 4K out of my Xbox One X, this monitor gets thrown right back to the bottom of the pile. It makes me really, really sad. And at the price of around $700 now, don't get this monitor unless you're only gonna be playing PC games on it and maybe a Nintendo Switch out of the HDMI port. Acer recently announced the Acer Predator X27, which looks like the same exact monitor just with HDR, a refresh rate of 144 Hertz, and most importantly, an HDMI port that supports HDMI 2.0. So it would work with an Xbox One X, but it isn't out yet, and when it does come out, it's estimated that it's gonna cost around $1,000 or $2,000. So the clear winner here is the Dell. The BenQ is a very nice monitor, but if you can get the Dell for the same price and the picture quality is that much better, why wouldn't you just get the Dell? BenQ is nice enough to offer us a promo code for 15% off of their monitor, but that's still not much cheaper than the Dell monitor. For now, I'm gonna stick with my Acer as my main monitor, but I'll be using the BenQ as my second monitor just so I can use my brand new Xbox One X to its full potential. This whole situation is a goddamn shame. As for ultra wides, I haven't forgotten about you. The EX3501R, they really need to do something about these. It's a really cool monitor. If I had room, it'd be great to just plug my laptop into when I'm at home. It has a USB type C input, so it works great with my MacBook. Not only does that one cable handle the display, it also charges my MacBook, but it's not 4K. It's half of a 4K screen. My laptop is only 1440p, so this isn't a deal breaker, but I need two screens when I game. One screen dedicated to gameplay and one full screen for OBS and the chat and whatever other crap. I actually just ended up using this monitor to edit my video tonight and it was, it works really well. As you can see, I have a big massive timeline and still room for other stuff. Having one USB type C cable plugged in is great because I can use the monitor as a USB hub and I can use the monitor to charge this thing, but Adobe Premiere is so power hungry that this laptop couldn't charge fast enough. So it was actually killing the battery while plugged in. So I had to have the Apple charger plugged in while I was using the monitor to charge. It was, it was a mess. So this is a cool concept and I totally get why people might want this if they're a one monitor workstation kind of guy like my brother. And I would totally pass this monitor off to him if he was willing to give me 800 bucks for it. So what do you guys think about all these different gaming monitors? What are you looking for in a gaming monitor? Do you mostly play on a TV? Is this video totally misguided? Leave it in the comments below. Add me on Twitter. All this social media garbage. Also tell me why this thing died. Today, the day this video is released, we will be streaming Sea of Thieves over on twitch.tv slash wolfdan on my brand new Xbox One X, but not in 4K because, hmm, whoo! We've got new videos and live streams all the time. This is our schedule over here. And of course, the most important things that you can do is subscribe and share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe plays games at his computer desk, 
or maybe he just sits on his couch. You need to get him off the couch. Thank you guys very much. You have yourselves a very good week. I love you. Mwah.